As for me, in justice I shall behold your face. I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Let us pray, O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who, for the faith they profess, are counted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honour. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah In the reign of Ahaz, son of Jotam, son of Uzziah, king of Judah, Rezon, the king of Aram, went up against Jerusalem with Pekah, son of Remaliah, king of Israel, to lay siege to it, but he was unable to capture it. The news was brought to the house of David. Aram, they said, has reached Ephraim. Then the heart of the king and the hearts of the people shuddered as the trees of the forest shudder in front of the wind. The Lord said to Isaiah, Go with your son, Shir Jasab, and meet Ahas at the end of the conduit of the upper pool on the fuller's field road, and say to him, Pay attention, keep calm, and have no fear. Do not let your heart sink, because of these two smouldering stumps of firebrands, or because Aram, Ephraim, and the son of Remaliah have plotted to ruin you and have said, Let us invade Judah and terrorize it, and seize it for ourselves, and set up a king there, the son of Tabil. The Lord says this, it shall not come true, it shall not be. The capital of Aram is Damascus, the head of Damascus, Rezon, the capital of Ephraim, Samaria, the head of Samaria, the son of Remaliah. Six or five years more, and a shattered Ephraim shall no longer be a people. But if you do not stand by me, you will not stand at all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God upholds his city forever. The Lord is great and worthy to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain rises in beauty, the joy of all the earth. God upholds his city forever. Mount Zion, true pole of the earth, the great king's city. God in the midst of his citadels has shown himself its stronghold. God upholds his city forever. For the kings assembled together, together they advanced. They saw at once, they were astounded. Dismayed, they fled in fear. God upholds his city forever. A trembling seized them there, like the pangs of birth. By the east wind you have destroyed the ships of Tashish. God upholds his city forever. Alleluia, alleluia. Train me, Lord to observe your law, to keep it with my heart. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to reproach the towns in which most of his miracles had been worked because they refused to repent. Alas for you, Chorazin! Alas for you, Bethsaida! 
For if the miracles done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. And still, I tell you that it will not go as hard on Judgment Day as with Tyre and Sidon as with you. And as for you, Capernaum, did you want to be exalted as high as heaven? You shall be thrown down to hell. For if the miracles done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have been standing still. And still I tell you that it will not go as hard with the land of Sodom on Judgment Day as with you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Unless your faith is firm, you shall not be firm. Faith is one of the theological virtues that we need to practice and nourish as we journey in this world. Theological virtues are infused by God into the souls of the faithful to make them capable of acting as His children and of meriting eternal life. They are the pledge of the presence and action of the Holy Spirit in the faculties of the human being, taken from the Catholic Catechism. By faith, we believe in God and in all that He has said and revealed to us. In the Old Testament, God often awakens faith in the hearts of His people to the prophets who call on them to return to God and to trust in Him. People do not always respond. Some have hearts like a footpath. There are many accounts of how they suffer the consequences when they do not believe in God. In the first reading, the prophet Isaiah brings the message of God to King Ahaz. He tells him to have faith and not be afraid. This reading gives us a message as well. Our strength in dealing with the challenges of life depends on the firmness of our faith. Firm faith enables us to overcome fear. In the Gospels, it is Jesus Himself, God made man, who calls us to live by faith. What Jesus did in the short time of His earthly ministry was largely intended to move people to faith and in this way receive the gift of salvation. The people who lived in His time were blessed to be able to witness His miracles, hear Him preaching, and even touch their Saviour personally. However, not everyone welcomed his ministry, just as not everyone welcomed the ministry of the prophets. Some rejected the messengers of God, and some rejected the Son of God. The scriptures show us the consequences that these people faced. In today's Gospel, Jesus gives a strong warning to the citizens of Chorazin and Bethsaida, towns near the Sea of Galilee, where he performed many of his miracles and proclaimed the way of salvation. Even Capernaum, where he chose to stay while in Galilee, did not accept the invitation to faith. Jesus says that on the day of the judgment, the sentence for the people of Sidon, Tyre, and even the notorious Sodom will be lighter than for these towns. Why? Because Jesus himself has come to them with the good news of salvation, and they refuse to accept it. Indeed, with every privilege given comes greater responsibility. For our part, we too must face the frightening possibility of rejection of the gift of faith. Jesus is not visible and visibly among us today, but He remains very present with us. He speaks to us through the Scriptures touches us in the sacraments and guides us by means of the teachings of the church, the magisterium. But many still reject him. Rejection of faith is not limited to those who deliberately choose not to believe in God and his church. It is also a danger for us who already belong to the church and profess the creed. We reject the faith, for example, when we do not put into action the faith which we profess. That's why St. James in his letter says that faith that is not put into practice is dead. When we decide to change our lives because we are followers of Christ, we practice our faith. When we trust in the goodness of God, 
and do not despair even amid difficulties, sickness and uncertainties, we practice our faith. When we set aside our preferences to serve the needs of others, we practice our faith. Internal acts of faith naturally radiate externally. Preaching is a good and necessary way of sharing our faith, but not all are touched by preaching. People want to see and feel. Thus, love in action is more effective than words alone. The ultimate proof of our faith is not how well we speak about it, but how well we follow the example of Jesus who gave his life for others. Let us pray now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.